Hello and welcome back to Abstract Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk about general vector spaces and general linear maps. And in today's part 31, we will talk about what we know about solutions of linear equations in this general context. In fact, for that we can use a lot from our linear algebra course already. However, before we go into the details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please use the link in the description to download the additional material like books, quizzes and PDF versions and to enter our community forum. Ok, then let's immediately start by considering a linear map between two general vector spaces V and W. This means that V and W are chosen as F vector spaces where F is either given by the real numbers or by the complex numbers. And usually in this video course we assume that the vector spaces have finite dimensions because we want to calculate with matrix representations. Indeed for matrices you already know how to solve systems of linear equations and therefore now I want to shift them to this general case. Which means we have to fix a vector on the right hand side and let's call it b. And now we can read the linear equation as L of x is equal to b. And for this equation we can ask about all possible solutions x and v we can find. In other words, this is the abstract formulation for solving a system of linear equations. We see that immediately because we can just choose bases and a matrix representation of the linear map L. And then you know what we have is a matrix times a column vector is equal to a column vector. Hence this is just an ordinary system of linear equations which you are able to solve. However, depending on your application, it's not always needed to solve the whole system explicitly. For example, sometimes it's good enough to just know about uniqueness and existence of solutions. And since all the information of the system is already inside our linear map L, we might not have to do this translation at all. Therefore, we just have to generalize some definitions such that we also have them for our general linear maps. In fact, you might already know, what we need is the kernel and the range of the linear map L. And these two things are not complicated at all, because the kernel is just the set of all elements in V that are sent to 0 by L. In other words, it's given by the solution set of the linear equation, where the right hand side is given by the 0 vector in W. So please remember that, also in this general context, we speak of the kernel. On the other hand, range of L is even easier to remember because it's just the set of all elements on the right hand side that are hit by the map. Hence in the long formulation you could say take all vectors w such that there is an x in V with the property that L of x is given as w. And moreover you know that this formulation makes sense for every map between two sets. Ok, with that we have it, now we have two important terms that work for every linear map L. And regarding solutions of a linear equation, you might immediately see that the range tells us something about the existence and the kernel about the uniqueness. Indeed this is exactly the same thing as we had it for matrices. Similarly, it's not hard to show at all that the kernel and the range form subspaces. And there the kernel has to be a subspace on the left hand side in V and the range is a subspace in W on the right hand side. So again, in this picture we can ask about solutions of the linear equation Lx is equal to B. And obviously if B does not lie in the range of L on the right hand side, then we don't have a solution at all. So please remember that, knowing the range here tells us about the existence of solutions. And on the other hand, uniqueness of such a solution we can only have if the kernel is trivial. More precisely, this means if the kernel contains more than just the zero vector, then we cannot have uniqueness of solutions. Simply because in this case we can always add such a non-trivial kernel element to the given solution. 
And not so surprisingly, the solution set looks similar to what we have in the matrix case. Therefore, I would say, let's put this into a quick proposition as well. Hence, the assumptions are all the same as before. We take a linear map, two vector spaces, and a right-hand side B. And now we can call the solution set simply S, and it contains all the elements in V that solve our linear equation. And now we get two cases for S, either it's empty or it's in a fine subspace. The first case we obviously have if B is not in the range of L. And in the second case we know that there is at least one solution and we call it x0. And now we get all the solutions by simply adding the kernel of L to x0. So you see, this is exactly the same result as we had it in the matrix case. And now it turns out that even the proof is exactly the same again. However, for the sake of completeness, let's quickly write it down again. So let's assume that S is not the empty set, so that we find at least one x0 in it. Explicitly, this means if we put x0 into L, we get out the vector b. And now in the next step, let's take any vector v in our vector space v, and then we look at the combination x0 plus v. And now what we want to show is, that this new vector lies in S if and only if V comes from the kernel of L. And this is not hard at all, because the characterization of being in the solution set is really simple. It just means by applying L we get out B. But now you should see, here on the left hand side we can use the linearity of our map L. So we can just pull out the addition and we get L of x0 plus L of V. But now by assumption, we already know that L of x0 is already b. Hence we can subtract it on both sides and we get that L of v is equal to the zero vector. And essentially this is it, because it means that v has to lie in the kernel of L. So there we have it, this shows the form of the solution set and this form also explains why we know that the kernel tells us about uniqueness. Only the case that the kernel is trivial, so given by only the zero vector, we get that we only have one solution for the solution set. Of course the whole thing here is not so surprising if you already know properties of linear maps. And indeed by the matrix representations, we know that the properties we have for linear maps between finite dimensional vector spaces are the same properties as we have them for matrices. And one of the most important theorems is given by the rank nullity theorem. This one tells us about the relation between the dimension of the kernel and the dimension of the range of a linear map. And since we talk about dimensions, here the vector spaces that are involved have to be finite dimensional. And in this case we can definitely add up the finite numbers dimension of range and dimension of kernel. And there you already know, the dimension of the range is already known as the rank of the linear map. And on the other hand, the dimension of the kernel is called the nullity. So this already explains the name of the theorem, and now the claim is that both dimensions added gives us the dimension of the space we put in. Hence in our case, it's simply the dimension of the vector space V. Okay, so this is the famous rank nullity theorem for linear maps and you definitely should remember that. And moreover, the proof is really simple because we can just use matrix representations. And then we can use that for matrices we already know the rank nullity theorem, which means that this sum of the two dimensions is equal to the number of columns of the matrix. And usually we call this number n. And now if you recall part 28 and part 29 of the series, then you know that these dimensions here don't depend on the chosen matrix representation. This means if you change the matrix representation, you cannot change these dimensions here. And exactly this proves the rank nullity theorem in this general setting as well. And there I would say, we should definitely look at examples and applications of that, but we should do that in the next video. So I really hope I meet you there and have a nice day. Bye bye.